All right, today I want to talk to you about kind of a cool technique for finding limits um, called the sandwich theorem. And so I have it written out here the way that you'll find it in most textbooks, which is uh, a little bit more complicated than it, than it actually is. Um, but just to translate the math that's going on here, what we're saying is f of x is our function of interest, usually. And we've got it split in between two, one slightly larger or a lot larger, and then one that's smaller. So the, the value of f of x is in between these other two, smaller than this one, but uh, or bigger than this one, but smaller than this one. Um, if, if that's true, if f of x is in between the, the g of x and h of x function, then kind of what we're saying is the same thing is going to be true for the, the limit. The limit of, of f of x is going to be in between the limit of g of x and h of x as well. Um, so if it turns out that the limit of g of x is L and the limit of h of x is L, then the only way to be in between L and L is uh, to be L, right? So all, all three of the things are the same. So that's the idea. Uh, in English, um, it's saying, you know, more like what I was saying, that x is smaller than g of x but bigger than h of x. And, and g of x and h of x both have the same limit, then f of x is going to have that limit also. So, say we've got, you know, we've, we've got these functions. Uh, we'll put, um, this one's saying smaller than g of x, so if I put g of x here, uh, is greater than, we'll put f of x in the middle, and is bigger than h of x. And so, the idea is that the same thing would be true for the limit. If I took the limit, as x approaches c of g of x, it's going to have a greater value than the limit as x approaches c of f of x, which is going to be a greater value than the limit as x approaches c of h of x. Now let's see like this one, where the limit, finding the limit directly is a little bit complicated, but we could make some observations about this, uh, about this graph. Let's just look at, at this part here at first. If I think about the graph of sine x, it's got this shape where, where this max value up here is 1, and this minimum value down here is negative 1. So no matter how big or small the value inside there gets, the total sign of whatever that is, it can never be greater than 1, and it can be never less than negative 1. We'll say here that sine 1 over x, um, it's, it's got to be less than or equal to 1, and sine 1 over x has got to be greater than or equal to negative 1. Well, if I look at my maximum, so my max value here is 1, my minimum value is negative 1, well then that means that if I take this whole function, so now if I, if I bring down this x squared and I multi multiply it by the max, I get x squared. So this is the max value of this entire thing. And it's also saying, and, and with, with my x squared times sine 1 over x, if I use my minimum value, I get negative x squared. That's the smallest value that this can have. What that allows me to do, now that I have boundaries, is I can say that my x squared sine 1 over x it's, it's got to be in between negative x squared squared, which means that the limit, if we were doing a limit as uh, x approaches 0 here, right? So the limit as x approaches 0 of negative x squared is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared sine 1 over x is less than or equal to the limit squared. Well, this is a very basic
basic limit on, you know, on, the, on both ends of this. I can just plug in zero to get this value. So the value of this limit is zero. The value of this limit is zero. And so we're saying that our limit as x approaches zero of x squared sine one over x has to be a value that's in between zero and zero. Well, we just sandwiched it, right? We, we squished it. So our answer for this, the limit as x approaches zero of x squared sine one over x is zero. One kind of cool thing we could do with this now is take a look at this same logic that we just did analytically and we can look at it graphically. So I put that up on here. Right here I've got just a simple parabola for y equals x squared. And then I've got another opening downward parabola for y equals negative x squared. And in between, this is the graph of x squared sine 1 over x. And you can see that it's, it's bounded by these, just as we said it was going to be. And so if we take the limit as x approaches 0 from both sides, you can see everything converges at 0 right there. Plus it's. 